Hey, what is going on? It is Monday, March 7th, 2022, and March, yesterday was St. Patty's Day. I missed the parade, but I bet it was pretty awesome. Um, but pretty much all I have to say about that is that uh, I am, regardless of what I missed, I am still just excited to be talking about uh, the continuation of the glycolysis pathway. Um, so the way I've approached this, if you watch my previous videos, which you should, I think you should, um, these videos are going to get tighter as time goes on. So uh, for now, just uh, bear with me as I um, refine my process. The previous video, uh, I was talking about hexoisomerase, or sorry, hexokinase and glucokinase and uh, how they're involved in the first step of glycolysis, which is the phosphorylation of glucose, okay? Converting glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. And uh, essentially, glucose 6-phosphate is the product or the intermediate of glycolysis, which allows glycolysis to continue without glucose leaving the whole reaction site altogether and leaking outside of the cell or being transported outside of the cell via the glut receptor. So once glucose is uh, in a form, it's been phosphorylated, uh, the phosphoryl group has been added uh, to it through several um, interactions that occur with the hexokinase and glucokinase, um, then the end result this glucose 6-phosphate uh, goes into another reaction downstream. And that next reaction is an isomerization reaction, which converts uh, glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6-phosphate. So fructose 6-phosphate is basically uh, a ketose sugar. Well, glucose 6-phosphate is a phosphorylated aldose sugar. So why is what's the difference right so um it basically you can think about uh the aldose versus ketose without getting too much into the properties of aldehydes and ketones an aldose sugar is one where when this um hemiacetal bond here we'll go, have to go back to our organic chemistry uh to go into all the details this hemiacetal is broken uh this converts this ring will convert to a straight chain aldehyde okay but uh when this in phospho in the phos uh, fructose six phosphate when the bond is broken here the equivalent bond it is converted to a ketone okay so basically um when you look at the straight chain versions it'll be easy to see easier to see but that's kind of how you uh, note the difference. And the other difference in this particular case uh, is that this is a, a fructose 6-phosphate is a, a pentose sugar while glucose 6-phosphate is a hexose sugar. Okay, so one thing to note about glucose 6-phosphate is that glucose 6-phosphate participates in regulatory reactions uh, throughout the glycolysis pathway. and there are three regulatory phases. I talked about regulation as it was applicable to um, uh, glucokinase and hexokinase yesterday and how the presence of uh, 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 glucose 6-phosphate will, inhibit, uh, will inhibit glucokinase as well as the presence of glucagon and insulin um, because essentially there is a two-path reaction between glucose and glucose 6-phosphate uh, which allows glucose to go back into the blood um, which it's needed at points uh, right as the glucose needs to be transported um, but also too much blood glucose is bad right so that's why you have something that uh, reduces the amount of blood glucose okay so we talked about insulin and glucagon yesterday as those complementary uh, enzymes generated in the pancreas so um, glucose 6-phosphate uh, converting to fructose 6-phosphate, uh, the whole process occurs via an enzyme called phosphofruct or phosphoglucose isomerase. Okay, so isomerases are enzymes which allow for interconversion between an isomer 
of one uh, compound to another compound. So, uh, in iso so basically, the iso this is uh, fructose 6-phosphate is an isomer of glucose 6-phosphate, and an isomer again has the same chemical, uh, the number of um, total number of atoms and mass per atom, etc., no count of atoms. Uh, it's got the same composition but a different bonding structure. Okay, so these are the same molecules essentially, just rearranged differently uh, in terms of structure, but rearranged differently in terms of bonds, right? So again, the five carbon and six carbon uh, transition is the most, is the starkest way to see this in this example. Um, but yes, so let's continue. Phosphofructose, phosphoglucose isomerase, um, essentially uh, how it operates. So this phosphoglucose isomerase is, uh, it's also, it's, what I've looked up is that it is a moonlighting enzyme, so it kind of hangs out and does m many things, a number of things. Um, the, it primarily uh, is involved in this uh, part of the glycolysis pathway in the second step of isomerizing uh, fructose 6-phosphate. And uh, how does it do that? Um, essentially, the mechanism I'm not going to go too deep into, uh, partially because of a uh, fear of uh, giving you incorrect information at this point, but um, there are a lot of uh, videos out there which give a good overview of how to break how does phosphofructose isomerase convert uh, between glucose 6-phosphate and fructose 6-phosphate? For our purposes, I'll just give the overall structure. Um, so again, phosphofructose isomerase is a, a phosphoglucose isomerase is uh, created from, it's, there's the GP1 gene, I believe, which gives rise to this once it's uh, translated. Um, this again hangs out in the cytosol, right? And this is a cytosolic reaction because that's where glycolysis occurs. Uh, there's two co large components, right? Uh, essentially, units of this, uh, which are this, we can call this this blue unit and this red unit. And this blue and red unit work together to kind of pull this uh, GP6 apart. Uh, once it's pulled apart, then uh, essentially, it's re rearranged into an uh, uh, indiol intermediate, and then it's rearranged finally into phospho six, uh, uh, fructose six phosphate. So um, let's see if there's a good diagram on what's going on. But yes, you know, this is pretty much all the steps of how phospho fructose or phospho glucose isomerase works. So uh, there's the involvement of these histidine. So, sorry, this histidine and glutamate uh, amino acids. And basically what's going on is that in this histidine, and I believe lysine can also be involved um, in some cases, but uh, this histidine uh, for and glutamate essentially go through a preparatory phase where it's opening this glucose ring. Okay, the glucose ring is being opened by having uh, protonation of this oxygen here, right? And uh, then essentially a dual protonation called proton abstraction of this hydrogen here. So basically uh, it's pulled apart, right? And this hydrogen here becomes like a super uh, protic hydrogen because essentially it, it's a hydrogen that can kind of, kind of combine with two other uh, hydrogens or two other, it has two electrons on it. And so what happens is the histidine and glutamate also uh, essentially uh, change their charge and they create this indiol intermediate. So this indiol intermediate um, essentially is the where the double bond occurs, right? So this indi diol and indiol means you have two alcohols. You have an alcohol here, you have an alcohol here separated by a double bond. This because this double bond uh, the electrons transfer right over to create this double bond here, right? And r some of this is like resonance related and whatnot. Let's not get too much into that, but essentially what happens is so the double bond transfers again, right? After uh, instability is taken care of uh, via a reprotonation, and then the ring 
eventually closes because of the interaction with this histidine again. So there's only really two amino acids in this entire phosphoglucose isomerase structure that compose the active site. Um, the, and that makes this easier to understand because this ring closes again and creates this uh, pentose sort of phosphate six, uh, fructose six phosphate. But yeah, that's just something to keep in mind that there's all of these, it's interesting that all of the enzymatic amino acids support essentially this, these two, uh, these two amino acids doing side chains, doing the bulk of the work in this process. So, um, yeah, we, we can talk about other things related to uh, phosphoglucose isomerase, but we'll leave that for now. Um, and uh, tomorrow I'll be moving on to the next step in glycolysis or perhaps uh, taking a tangent into some gly more glycolysis regulation. All right. Thank you for chatting with me. Like, subscribe, and all that good stuff.